Well, today on the bench, we've got a nice uh, Kenwood TS940 that uh, has a little problem. Now you turn it on, you get a series of beeps, displays are all blank. Well, it looks like a serious problem, but really, uh, it's most likely just that the internal memory batteries have gone south. Now one way to verify this is to power up the rig while resetting the microprocessor. And we do that by holding down the AB key and hitting the power switch. And if we do that, we can see the rig comes up at 20 meters. Everything appears to be you know, kind of working. We can switch bands. So likelihood is that everything's okay. We just have to replace the batteries. Now the TS940 has two or three uh, internal batteries. One that backs up the memories of the microprocessor, and that's located underneath the speaker. And then there's either one or two behind the, uh, this multifunction digital display timer. Uh, depending on the vintage of the rig, it's either one or two batteries that are sitting back there. So let's take the covers off and see what we've got. The microprocessor backup battery is uh, sitting under the speaker here, so I'll have to pull some of this apart to get to it. And this is the back of the timer board. And if we zoom in here carefully, we can see that there are two batteries here. There's one here on top, there's another one sitting down below. So the microprocessor battery, as I mentioned, is under the speaker. It's a little more complicated than that. You have to essentially remove uh, this whole housing. There's uh, four screws uh, here, here, and then uh, two on this side. And then you can remove uh, some of the plugs with the wires and pull this out of your way. There are six plugs, all labeled F, uh, that Three of them go here, and then these three all come off here. So you can carefully remove those, and then the speaker housing can uh, be pulled out of the way. There are two wires connecting to the speaker. You can pull them off and put it off to the side, or simply uh, rest it off to the side carefully and continue. So the digital A unit, where the battery is located, is underneath uh, this cover. With this cover hinged up out of the way. Uh, there's our offending battery. And uh, if we take a closer look at that, we can certainly see that uh, it needs replacing. It's uh, getting a little bit of corrosion on there. And it's just soldered on to these two posts. Okay, we've got the uh, battery removed. Uh, and it was just soldered to these two posts. Uh, just taking note uh, that the battery is mounted with the positive side facing the microprocessor and uh, going over to this terminal here. So that's positive and negative. It's labeled that way on the board. There's a plus and a minus right on the board. Now while often parts are available from third parties, I do like to get parts from the uh, original equipment manufacturer when possible. So here's the replacement battery from Kenwood. Here with the new battery in place, uh, positive side down, it's uh, soldered in place. Now we can do a little careful reassembly of this side of the radio. Put this cover back in place over the uh, digital A unit and then reassemble the uh, speaker housing and reattaching all the wiring harnesses. Just take extra care that there's an awful lot of very small little wires throughout these harnesses and you want to be sure that when you're putting these mechanical pieces back together you don't pinch any of those wires. Now to get to the batteries on the back of the timer board here it's easiest to tilt the front panel down and the way to do that is to remove these two flathead screws and loosen up uh, this roundhead screw on both sides and then the front panel can be tilted down. And before doing that it's advisable to uh, remove this plug from the side of the timer board because that uh, won't stretch out far enough to allow you to tilt the board all the way down. So with that plug removed and the screws taken out and loosened the whole front panel of the 940 can come down giving you easy access to replace these batteries here. Now in this case it looks like the batteries are mounted uh, positive terminal up so both negatives are connected to this post down here. Uh, the positive of the bottom battery is connected to this post back here. And the positive of this top battery is actually connected to this flying lead of this diode under here. So we've got to be careful we don't hurt that diode. We start pulling these batteries off. I've right, got the first replacement battery soldered in place. And the second one will go from uh, the ground or negative over here to this flying lead of this diode sitting right here. And there we go. Installed a uh, double-sided uh, adhesive uh, foam pad between the two batteries so that the positive side of the top battery wouldn't touch the negative side of the lower battery. But with that, 
we're set to start to put the radio back together. One thing I want to point out while the front panel is still uh, sitting down here is this guy right here. This is the reset switch for the timer. And uh, once we get the rig back together and powered up the first time, uh, the likelihood is that the timer uh, is not going to be working right. Uh, we saw that before when the display was blank. So what we want to do is hit that reset button. You can kind of reach in with a thin little tool like a small screwdriver and hit that. That'll reset it. And then cycle the power on the radio once. And then when you bring it back up, everything should be good to go. And you want to be very, very careful as we raise the front panel back into place. There's an awful lot of wires and wiring harnesses here. You want to be sure everything gets tucked away neatly and nothing gets pinched. Of course, be sure to reattach this wire harness that you removed in order to drop the front panel. After powering up the rig, be sure to reset the timer by going down here and hitting the reset switch. All right, with the reset switch applied, it'll say Trio Kenwood uh, right here on the front panel. So after uh, hitting the reset button, uh, I can cycle the power of the rig again. And then the uh, multifunction display will have its normal function. All right, with that, uh, covers are back on, and it uh, looks like the, the clock is running, and uh, the other modes, uh, the VFO readouts, and the uh, memory readouts, which are now empty, uh, can all be scrolled through, and then the, uh, the graphical uh, display for the filtering, uh, that here works here as well. Couple hours work to uh, replace the batteries and uh, not difficult to do but you just have to be very very careful that you don't uh, get any of those fine wires pinched in any of the mechanical assemblies but uh, anyway I hope you enjoyed the video if you did uh, please give me a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to the channel already please consider doing so and if you are a subscriber uh, please click the bell that's right down here in the bottom of the YouTube page uh, just below the video that will give you a reminder each time I post a new video. Thanks again as always for watching and we'll see you next time.